Hey guys, so flu season is here and it's time to get the flu shot. Actually, it's been time. It's really best to get it uh, as soon as you can, as soon as clinics start offering it, usually like late September, early October, but better late than never. Here I am getting vaccinated with a very specific influenza vaccine. It's called flu block and is offered at uh, Target and Walmart as well as other clinics. Uh, what makes it different and the reason why I chose it is because it's egg free. Yes, unfortunately, most flu vaccines are made using chicken eggs. These vaccine viruses are then injected into fertilized hen's eggs and incubated for several days to allow the viruses to replicate. The virus-containing fluid is harvested from the eggs. For flu shots, the influenza viruses for the vaccine are then inactivated, killed, and virus antigen is purified. Flu block, on the other hand, like I said, is egg-free. It's made using an insect cell culture from the fall armyworm. Uh, this is in some ways similar to in vitro meat production. Uh, if you want more information on that, be sure to check out the SciShow video on in vitro meat. I'll have the link right here and in the description. Unlike current generation in vitro meat, the cell culture for flu block is continuous, meaning that no new cells have to be added. In fact, the original fall armyworm larva died in 1970 at Texas A&M, and its cell lines have been used and cloned now for 45 years. Also, unlike current generation in vitro meat in which the product is grown in a blood serum, insect cells can be grown in the absence of fetal bovine serum and other animal-derived ingredients, significantly reducing the chances of introducing an adventitious agent during manufacturing. So to any reasonable person, flu block is vegan, unless you're still mourning the probable death of an insect larva from 45 years ago. Hopefully I don't have to explain how silly that is. Now the question is, why do we need vaccines at all? Why advocate for a vegan vaccine in the first place? Well, I already did a video on vaccines in general and why they're awesome and don't cause autism. <laughs> uh, if you haven't seen that, be sure to check that out right here or find the link in the description. The flu vaccine is a little different in that it is typically less effective than the vaccines for, say, polio, mumps, measles, etc. And efficacy varies from season to season. The reason is simple. There are many strains of influenza and the vaccine as currently formulated generally only covers a handful of strains. Basically, every year the World Health Organization, in collaboration with the CDC and other health organizations throughout the world, has to make an educated guess which strains of influenza will be circulating the following winter. Generally, the World Health Organization chooses the three strains it deems most likely to cause significant human suffering and death in the coming flu season. As you can imagine, predicting many months in advance which strains will be circulating in the following flu season is a dicey proposition under the best of circumstances. When the World Health Organization gets it right, the flu vaccine is maximally effective. When it doesn't, we have a situation in which the vaccine is not as effective as we would like it to be. This is what happened last year for the 2014-2015 season in which we saw an efficacy rate of only 18%. 2013, on the other hand, had a much better rate at 51%. As with anything, you have to weigh the risks and the benefits. Do the benefits outweigh the risks? In the case of the influenza vaccine, they seem to. Studies have found that immunization for various populations reduces risk of influenza infection. And the data also suggests that if you get vaccinated and still get the flu, that the symptoms are likely going to be milder. On the other hand, the chance of having a serious reaction to the vaccine is very small. There is a small possibility that influenza vaccine could be associated with Guillain-Barre syndrome, no more than one or two cases per million people vaccinated. This is much lower than the risk of severe complications from flu, which can be prevented by flu vaccine. And the flu block vaccine is likely safer, since it's highly purified, doesn't contain the actual virus, and contains fewer residual animal proteins. The only downside for some could be the cost, although since it's new, the price will likely come down and more carriers will cover it. As of now, it's about $40 without insurance, and not all insurance carriers cover it. So now you may be thinking, so? I don't get the flu, or when I do get the flu, it's not so bad. So why would I get vaccinated? First, just because you haven't had the flu in the past or haven't had a bad case of the flu doesn't mean you won't in the future. 
Second, getting vaccinated helps protect others who are more susceptible to serious complications from the flu, people like the elderly, the very young, and immunosuppressed individuals. If you are still concerned about the flu vaccine or just don't see the value in it, I have included a bunch of links in the description for you to check out. Please do so because uh, it's, it's very important. And that's it. That's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I can't wait to see the comments. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of stuff <laughs> about the evils of vaccine. So uh, uh, I'm prepared, I guess. But uh, I know I know many of you will enjoy it. So that's really cool. And maybe it'll insp inspire some of you to check out Flublok and get vaccinated. Uh, it's, it's pretty great. It's pretty awesome. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching, guys. And if you want to subscribe, of course, do that. Um, if you want to support me, you can do so at patreon.com slash unnaturalvegan. And thanks again, and I will have a new video very soon.